In this presentation, I will talk about the caries diagnostic procedure. Like any diagnostic procedure, we should do three basic steps, which are the history taking, the clinical examination, and the use of the diagnostic aids. Regarding caries, we should uh, take the history about the patient's age, gender, socioeconomic status, fluoride exposure, smoking, and alcoholism, and diet. And that is because uh, the regarding the age, the, pa the young patients are more susceptible to have rampant caries. On the other hand, the elderly patients are more susceptible to have root caries. Regarding the gender, uh, females like chocolates and cakes and all these sweet stuffs more than males so that they are more susceptible to caries uh, in this regard than males. Also when they became pregnant uh, the, the nausea and vomiting and all of these um, things that happen to them during the uh, pregnancy will make them neglect their oral health and subsequently they are more susceptible to caries than males in this regard also. Um, also the uh, nausea and vomiting stuff and the regurgitation of the asses from the stomach will uh, demoralize the uh, enamel and true structure of the pregnant women continuously making their teeth more susceptible to caries and even fracture and uh, actually this is uh, what i have seen in so many women so many women after pregnancy they have uh, drastically damaged teeth and this is very obvious in so many women the socioeconomic status of course patients with high socioeconomic status are less susceptible to caries and also to periodontal disease of course while the low socioeconomic status um, patients are more susceptible to caries because they neglect their oral health because they don't have the enough money to take care of their oral health the fluoride exposure of course the patients with um, that are living in uh, states with uh, systemic flora, uh, fluoridation and who were taking tablets when they are then when they were children are less susceptible to caries because of the uh, tooth structure that is stronger and uh, less susceptible to caries when it is a fluoridated tooth structure smoking and alcoholism also uh, play a role in this regard because they will uh, affect the quantity and quality of the uh, bacteria present in the oral cavity they will also uh, um, the nicotine actually prevent the remineralization or let's say de delay the remineralization procedure of the uh, tooth structure and they also uh, affect the uh, cerebral flow rate and the stuff which will um, finally affect the carious lesion procedure. The diet. The diet is a very, very important factor that will determine the carious uh, initiation, progression, and severity because the um, uh, amount and the frequency of carbs will determine if the patient is more susceptible to caries or not like the patients who are taking uh, more fibrous uh, food like the veggie people or uh, more proteinous food like the fitness guys or bodybuilders these are let's say less susceptible to carries because they uh, consume carbs less than the other people the second thing is the clinical examination the clinical examination uh, Comp is composed of four parts which is uh, which are inf uh, inspection palpation uh, percussion and auscultation during the diagnostic procedure for caries we will use inspection and uh, 
palpation only. The inspection is very important because we can, as uh, as we can see in this picture, there will be of course a change color, uh, a change color uh, in the carious lesion, so that we can determine this is a carious lesion or not by the uh, undermined enamel. The palpation is done with the dental probe, uh, and this is the most important and the mostly used method to diagnose caries. The probe uh, is very important and if it catches that mostly mostly mean that there is a cavity and this is a carious lesion. Of course uh, they're in association with other diagnostic methods and we should know if the enamel chips or not if there is a softening of the enamel and dentin or not, uh, all of these factors in association with the catching that will lead us to diagnose the carious lesion by probing. Because some uh, authors say that uh, only catching is not enough to determine that this is a carious lesion because it might be a pit or a fissure. The use of the diagnostic aids. The use of the diagnostic aids include the use of radiographs and specifically the bite wing radiographs. The bite wing radiographs are indispensable in the diagnosis of interproximal caries, guys. Believe me, they are very important in the diagnosis of these caries lesions. And also, we can use the uh, caries detecting dyes and Finally, we can use the trans elimination. It is a very beautiful method to um, examine the teeth for fractures, craze lines, and caries. Thank you for improving yourself by listening to this video. And always try to know, spread knowledge, and construct the world. Uh, try to be kind to one another and that is for the greatest benefit to the humankind.